Well, hey everyone, how's it going? So, in this video, I'm going to be showing you something pretty cool here. Um, as you all know who follow my renewable energy videos, I have a 5,000 watt power jack inverter. Now, I'm not going to get into any of the controversies uh, regarding the power jack inverters, whatever, okay? I'll save that for another video or you can look them up yourself. Um, but anyway, I've got a 5,000 watt power jack inverter currently, and it will not start my big window air conditioner. I have more than enough uh, wattage and amperage coming in from my solar panels, but the inverter itself just will not start it. So I decided that it was time to upgrade. And this is what it is. Now I already opened this um, just to inspect it to make sure that uh, everything was there. Uh, I've got an unboxing of my 5,000 watt inverter. It's exactly the same. The same stuff comes with it. It's very well packaged. Uh, you know, it comes with bubble wrap around here, but again, I already took it out to uh, inspect everything. But here it is. It is the 8,000 watt low frequency inverter. And uh, it's, <laughs> it is massive. I think this weighs about 63 pounds. It's, it's huge compared to the 5,000 watt. And I'm going to hook all this up to my battery bank, and I'm going to see if this will actually power my, or start, my window air conditioner. I'm generating about 40, looks like 44 amps of electricity from the panels right now at 12 volts. Uh, actually, it's about 13.2 volts right now, so uh, that's more than enough to um, power that uh, window air conditioner. So I'm going to go ahead and get all this hooked up, and then uh, you'll be able to see if this thing will actually power or start my big window air conditioner. Now, just for a quick size comparison, uh, this is the 8,000 watt underneath. You can see how much longer it is versus the 5,000. The five and the eight are exactly the same on this side here, as well as this side here, okay? They're identical. There's nothing different between the two here, okay? Now I thought that the 8,000 watt version actually came with push fuses, reset breakers, whatever, but it doesn't. It actually comes with, there's two 15 amp fuses in here, which 15 amps, I don't know, 15 amps at 240 volts, 220 whatever, I'm not really sure, doesn't really seem like it put out 8,000 watts, but anyway, uh, there's 10 amp fuses in these here. Uh, so anyway, the difference is there's absolutely none. Okay, and this inverter is about two years old. This inverter here is obviously brand new. So, that's the size difference there. Now, I do have a complete breakdown of this one here uh, on my YouTube channel. You can check that out. I'll leave a link in the description. And basically, with the 8,000 watt model, is um, you know they added uh, another transformer in here and increased its surge capabilities. So we'll see if it actually does hold up to that claim. Okay, so if you've ever hooked up a battery bank to an inverter, you'll know that it doesn't matter what kind of inverter it is. As soon as you touch or make the connection, in this case, I already have the positive hooked up to the battery bank, but as soon as you make that connection to the negative, you'll get just an incredible spark. And it's just something that happens. Well, you know, It's not really that big of a deal if you expect it, but I've got a trick here. I have here a cute little... Uh, bug here. This is a ladybug. Okay, it's a lamp and on the inside here is an incandescent bulb. So what I'm going to be doing here is I'm going to be using the resistance of the incandescent bulb to transfer the electricity from the battery bank to the inverter slowly. Okay, so this is going to be a slow process, maybe about 20-25 seconds or so. And what that's going to do is that's going to charge the capacitors that are on the inside of this inverter. That way you don't get that, that massive spark that comes out of touching these terminals together. Okay, uh, So it's really easy to do. Just make sure your lamp is actually on. It has to be in the on position. And you just touch, it doesn't matter which you know prong, you just touch one of them to the uh, whichever side uh, the post that you had. And then you just touch it like that. And you hold that for uh, about 20-25 seconds. And what's happening right now is the batteries are now grounded to the inverter. And it's sending electricity at a very slow rate uh, to the capacitors. So they become charged, okay? Because right now they're probably 
fully discharged. Okay, so I went ahead and waited. Uh, okay, so I went ahead and waited about 30 seconds. So touch and nothing. There's no spark, no nothing came out of this. So this one's actually ready to go. In fact, it comes down here. So anyway, that's the that's really the the easiest way to prevent a big big spark. Use an incandescent bulb that works. Obviously, it has to function. And if you have it hooked up to a plug, which makes it a lot easier, obviously, just use the plug to slowly bring the electricity through, and then you don't get a spark like that. Pretty cool. Okay, so the inverter is now connected to the battery bank. We're going to go ahead and power it on. And there's a switch on the side to operate the fan manually. I prefer to have it on, even if I have no draw, I prefer to have that fan on all the time. Because these MOSFETs that are in here are uh, pretty renowned for uh, failing, especially due to heat. So, um, yeah, everything seems to be looking great. Alrighty, window air conditioner is plugged into the inverter. This is a big 12,000 BTU window air unit. It's huge. The 5,000 watt inverter could not start this, so we'll see if the 8,000 watt inverter does. and it does not okay so the first attempt to start this failed as soon as I plugged it back in though this has a uh, a uh, power disconnect feature where you know if your power goes out and it comes back on it'll automatically start the uh, the air conditioner back up again right now it's running in fan only and in a few minutes here it should kick on the compressor and that will tell me <laughs> if this thing works but the inverter overloaded immediately Okay, so the inverter cannot start this air conditioner at least on 110 volts using the plug. So that's something to be aware of. This is a 12,000 BTU uh, window air conditioner. This little guy down here is actually a 5,000 BTU air conditioner. And my other inverter, the 5,000 watt inverter, had no trouble starting it. So that's something to be aware of, that at least through the plug, it cannot start this. So you're looking at my window air conditioner and it is running on the inverter right now this is the first time I've actually been able to get this thing to start on the inverter I'm not gonna run it for very long I just that beep you hear is my uh, battery backup because I unplugged everything else except for this air conditioner um, but uh, there's the run start capacitor which is you know common on uh, fans motors compressors that's the compressor right there and this is the uh, compressor booster capacitor. I checked the terminals across there and it is in fact running 200 volts. Now the very first time that I started this thing up, it did not start. It actually tripped the inverter, the inverter shut down because it couldn't handle it. I tried it again and it was a very slow but eventual start. I shut it off for five minutes, turned it back on again and it came on just like that. So my guess is, is that this thing has to charge up over time. The, the first time that I checked the, uh, the amperage that was running across this, it was about 5 amps when it was starting. Um, and then as soon as, excuse me, it was about 3 amps. And then when I checked it again, because I was making sure that this was in fact providing the, the power needed, it was about 5 amps. And then I checked it the third time and it was uh, about 6 amps. So it is in fact you know, it's like it's charging itself. It is, in fact, um, uh, getting better to start every time. Um, I'm going to go ahead and show you. I'll put it back into um, just fan mode. So now it's back into fan mode. Of course, you obviously you don't want to do something like this. I've got this thing open. It's inside the house, so it's not running very efficient, but it's just to demonstrate this thing actually does in fact work there is a three minute safety on this so you can't just go right back to the compressor and uh, start it back up so I'm gonna go ahead and skip ahead to the compressor starting up and I have um, the uh, client meter hooked on to here it's running in fan mode right now as soon as I hit this button here it should start the compressor and we'll see how much it draws from that thing there so 
almost six amps. You can see there that it drew almost six amps. You can still hear that it was slow. Oh, it's getting really cold. It was slow to start this. Uh, that's that's going to be obvious because the inverter itself, it just disappointingly cannot provide the uh, the power needed to start this thing on 110. Um, and I really do think a lot of it has to do with the fact that um, it's not running in split phase, uh, to be honest. But again, I don't know for sure. The inverter is going to be going into split phase. I'm getting ready to hook it up to the house. But even if I do have it hooked up to the house, this little thing here is going to help immensely when it comes to um, starting. Because I still don't want the inverter to have to do that much work. Um, See, I actually have my old inverter open over there. I'm doing some modifications to it right now. And uh, I'm going to get a video of that cooling modifications to that thing. But I'll get a video of that later. I'm actually working on it right now. Uh, so anyway, this does work. It takes a couple of tries before I think this thing charges up. That's my guess, because the first time it wouldn't start. The second time it was drawing like 3 amps. And you can see it almost drew 6 amps there. So I think it just takes a little while for it to charge up. Now my concern is now is I wonder if this thing has got a full charge on it because I have to disconnect it in order to mount it uh, so I'll have to figure that out later but anyway yeah uh, the power jet converter will start this particular unit 12,000 BTU unit it will not start it without this capacitor without that jump start boost to actually get started so with that in mind uh, yeah, you can in fact run a power jack with a very large, this is a 12,000 BTU uh, unit, and there's the uh, specifications on the compressor itself. So, anyway, alright, well, there you go, it'll do it. Now, I'm going to have to mod the uh, power jack because I'm really not comfortable with the amount of heat that it puts out running something like this. Oh, and as another side note. The power jack inverter, when this thing was running, it was it said it was running at 2,500 watts, which is not the case, simply because this thing only draws about 900 watts at most. But that thing, that meter is way off. Alrighty, so uh, this is how I have it hooked up. The uh, capacitor is on the outside here. What I did notice is that this thing gets warm. Now it's supposed to be in an area where it's not going to get wet. This side of the air conditioner here, you can see where you would pass uh, the, um, the, the, what do you call that, the, the kit that blocks off the air in the window. So you can actually see where the window line is at right here. So I positioned it in front of that window line so that even when I do get it in the window, uh, it's not going to be blocked or this is not going to be blocking anything. So. And you can pretty much put it anywhere, and every air conditioner is different. Uh, so this will remain inside. Now, I did notice that this thing actually gets pretty warm. Uh, it's not warm right now, but I did notice that it does get pretty warm. It started right up. Uh, I had this thing unplugged while I was trying to mount this, get it all positioned and everything. So I had it unplugged for, I don't know, maybe 20, 25 minutes. And the inverter actually started it right up on the first time. It kind of kind of hesitated for a second but then it grabbed it and uh, it started uh, the compressor just fine the compressor is running uh, so yeah it will it will actually start it um, without an issue so I mean this thing is really cool to have uh, I'm not gonna leave it like this obviously uh, I need to get the inverter hooked up to the house so that I can run it in split phase because right now I'm just running it through an extension cord uh, which obviously isn't good, especially an extension cord that's not rated for this. But again, this is not, I'm not running this, this is just for testing. So, uh, once I get it hooked into the house, then it'll be fine. But I just wanted to test it to make sure that it was going to be working, and it does. Again, the inverter is saying it's pulling like 2,500 watts, which is so inaccurate. And I'm going to be making some, uh, some modifications. As I said, this is my 5,000 watt unit, and the watt meter actually ammeter, meter it actually converts using a formula uh, is right there and you can see that it only monitors one of the two phases you've got one phase here for 110 volts this is the other phase for 110 volts and you can see that it is not actually monitoring both of these so I'm going to turn that off uh, 
So it's not, it, it really isn't that accurate. And um, even if it was monitoring both phases, I don't think it's accurate. So actually what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be installing a couple of um, uh, meters myself. Again, that's all going to come later. Uh, i got a bunch of parts coming. I use this to practice on uh, to make my modifications, and this thing runs just fine. So uh, I'm going to be installing all that on my 8,000 watt unit. So anyway, uh, yeah. So it does run pretty good. Um, seems to do just fine. So, all right, guys, if you have any questions, definitely let me know. Take care.